Hey everyone, welcome to Punked in Practice. This is a quick demonstration of how I use Punked to publish my own personal website at joelduick.com. I published Punked at the end of 2022 and I'm still working on it. It's a programming environment for publishing things written in Racket. Uh, it's very similar to Pollen uh, if you've used that. It's just my own take on a tool that's like Pollen but more um, much more attuned to my own idiosyncratic needs, wishes, and wants. It's not a complete system by itself, so I wanted to give an example of how it's used in practice, how I use it in practice, for anyone that's curious about using it for themselves. A punct document is um, essentially a markdown document, common mark flavored markdown with optional inline racket code. You can escape to racket inside the markdown. You'll notice that uh, this here, this is the source code to the front page of my website at joelduick.com. Uh, it ends in .rkt and it starts with hashlang. Um, so you, you can bet those are clues for those in the know that this is a racket program. If I run this program in a racket REPL, um, it produces a binding called doc, and I can just show the contents of that here. Um, I won't go into all the details of what this value is, or but essentially it's a prefab struct that represents the parsed content of the document. It has a hash table at the top with this um, metadata shown up here. And then at the bottom, you see uh, the second element of the struct is kind of a, a tree uh, with the parsed contents of the document. This is a format agnostic, format independent. And the idea is that you'll write other racket code that will take this value and convert it into HTML or LaTeX or Typest or whatever other uh, format output format you're going to be using. And uh, that is indeed uh, what I've done. Um, if I let's just go back to the shell here, um, I have a make file to describe the dependencies and kind of run tasks for me. So at the command prompt inside this project folder, I can just type make, and the default rule of the make file will just show this this help screen. Um, most commonly, I'm running these publish, web, and zap tasks. If I show you the layout of the project here, I have a, a writing folder with uh, all of the kind of my individual uh, articles in there. And then the published output, the, the, the website, goes into this published folder. So you can see that they end up as HTML files in that folder. If I type make zap, uh, it will clear all those out. So they're gone. The other files stay there because there's no reason to remove them. But um, so I've just kind of removed those. Make web will rebuild whatever needs to be re rebuilt, which since I've just zapped everything is everything. Everything needs to be rebuilt. And I like to tack on J8 to tell make to use uh, eight cores in parallel to get it done a lot faster. And um, there it's done. Didn't take very long. So now the site has been completely rebuilt. I'm going to switch window layouts here. Uh, let's see here, pardon the delay. Um, this is the site at joelduick.com. If I run the start server script, it will serve a local copy of the site uh, on port 8000. This is um, not something that's provided by Punct. It's uh, a simple script that I wrote, and it is contained in the start server file here. And it's using uh, Rayco static web, which is uh, another package to be a simple HTTP server on a local port to serve uh, the static contents of a folder. So I've told this package, uh, 
run a local web server uh, using this publish folder as the root of the of the site. And then separately in the background, I'm using this fswatch utility that keeps an eye on any .rkt file uh, in this folder. And whenever one it changes, it runs the um, make web j8 command. So for example, um, on this file, if I were to change, and you can see it kind of running down here, um, if I were to change and decide that I was going to be in North Dakota, I could say North Dakota, and you'll see that down here it decides, oh, that changed, so let's remake the HTML file. And then over here, rebuild it, refreshing the page shows the change. The script will kind of always clean up after itself when it's done, so I just hit Control C to, to close it, and that's done. Let's go back to the document here. You can see, uh, like I said, it's marked down. The middle dot character which on a Mac you type using Alt-8 uh, escapes to racket code and anything following that is essentially a function call and the results of that um, that racket expression are inserted into the document at that point. Uh, other than racket base you don't get access to any functions you need to use require in order to get them. So if I wanted to use Pi, for example, I would have to, as in an, any normal racket program, require racket math, and then I could just simply insert pi into this um, into this document, and it got that from racket math. You can see up there. Um, if I want to have access to a common set of functions in every page on my site, I I don't necessarily want to type require into every document. And that's the reason for this JDCom that you see up here at the top. Uh, the punct reader will look for any module paths on this initial lang line and kind of require those in for you. So it's kind of a syntactic convenience. Um, let me just, so if I were to delete that require and just add racket math um, on the top there then I would still be able to access, whoops, sorry, I'd still be able to access pi um, in this document. You can also uh, use quote marks, anything you would use in a require statement you can add onto this line. Uh, JDCom refers to the uh, JDCom package which I created just for this website. So in Pollen, Pollen will auto kind of look for a nearby pollen.rkt file for you and, and kind of auto require that into your document. Um, but uh, the equivalent in punct is that you give it a module um, and you write you, you write a kind of a local package just for your site. Um, by having an info.rkt package here in the project folder, I can install this folder as a, a package a racket package on my site with this uh, that uses this JDCom collection. So that's what lets me require JDCom and give, gives me access to everything in this main.rkt. So this is where my what Pollen would call tag functions are all defined. If I go back here, um, the the LSP magic in VS Codium will let me go to the definition of this function in main.rkt, it's the same file here, and there is where this function is defined. So these uh, tag functions kind of all spit out x expressions, and then further down I have a function that I give my template code that can convert that into HTML. If I also wanted to, to produce LaTeX or some other format, I would write another format that would, or another function that would convert these into that format. I'll get into that in a second. Um, 
let me uh, revert all my changes here and put myself back into Minnesota. And then, um, so I, I have a margin function here to put something in the margin. This puts uh, this is an image tag. Uh, one other thing I've done with my punked projects, uh, of which this is the first and only one currently, is I make functions out of punctuation. So I use the at symbol as my kind of cross-reference function. So this will produce a cross-reference link to another page within the site. I can either supply it a, a slug to use to find the HTML file, or um, over here, I can just use a word and it will grab the title from that page and do everything in one step. Another page I have here is simply called Screech. It's a quote from Farley Moe. It's the boat who wouldn't float. And at the bottom of the black quote here, I have um, an, a middle dot, which indicates an escape to racket code. Uh, and then this is actually an M dash, which is a function. Um, and that function produces an attribution um, to attribute the block quote to, to a source. And then when outputting to HTML, that attribution will produce an HTML footer element and prefix the source with an M dash. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Punct does not provide its own templating functionality. It's the idea is that you'll kind of write that yourself. And on my site, I have this render page um, program, racket program, that uses the at expression kind of syntax to um, produce a, an HTML template with interpolated values. Um, so within this kind of string concatenation, I'm calling, uh, you can see there's a, a date format here function that I'm calling. And I do kind of various other things to grab the title and insert the HTMLified version of my document. So when this program is run, it kind of grabs some arguments off the command line and it will kind of convert that into HTML and print that to standard output. And then the, the make file here's that render page program. Um, that make file will then also pipe that through the tidy program, which produces a very tidy HTML file, uh, resulting in what you see here. So this is the resulting HTML, and everything is very nicely kind of line wrapped and um, pleasant to look at if you are so adventurous as to do view source in your browser when looking at my site. I also have a program in this folder that will produce an RSS feed using my split flap library that I wrote that produces um, guaranteed valid Atom and RSS feeds. Um, and so that's a pretty straightforward uh, program. Defines some kind of site-wide variables here, some functions for looking up all the sources, converts those sources into feed items, and then splits out that uh, into a feed. Um, if you want to look at this code, you can do it at joelduick.com slash code slash jdcom. Uh, I have a fossil repository there with all the kind of the latest sources of everything. It's all CC um, licensed. And you can uh, poke through this in more detail. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, get in touch using uh, my email, joel at jduick.net.